You are watching part two of the Retro Gaming on a CRT Masterclass by Retrotech. Thanks for watching. Please make sure you've subscribed to the channel and like the video. The colors out or make your picture screen on the front of your tube. So that was their big breakthrough. They finally made the tube and it was, uh, it was, it looks and sounds similar to the Chromatron because it's using one gun, but they actually just abandoned that technology and had to redesign it. That's really the only thing that's the same about it is the single gun. And uh, the final product was unique enough to apply for its own patent, which was very important. Uh, the, new Sony, or the new Sony tube was named the Trinitron, which everybody's heard of, from the root word Trinity for the union of the three electron guns into a single gun and then Tron from Electron. All right, so Sony's new Trinitron, it pretty much outperformed every CRT on the market. The single laser, or the single, I'm sorry, the single electron beam was able to go and burn brighter than any shadow mask at the time, especially since they were still making them in that triangular pattern at this time. Uh, they also needed a lot less adjustment. Actually, the shadow mask tubes at that time, they come off the assembly line and they'd have to be individually basically calibrated uh, per set with all kinds of issues but the uh, Trinitron didn't have that trouble it was a lot more user-friendly right out of the production production facility and Sony dominated their 40 years of CRT production and we talked about the Trinitron that, that's what I've got down here it's only curved along one axis so that's different where it's only curved along the right to left and your horizontal axis, the vertical side of the tube is completely straight and flat, no curve. And um, it really wasn't until the, so Sony again got licensing, they got a 30 year patent in 1966 and it went all the way to 1996 and that whole time shadow mass tubes couldn't catch up with the technology uh, and really be hugely competitive on a uh, quality standard. So it wasn't until that patent expired that Shadow Mass tubes really started getting better and uh, advanced a lot in technology. So these are these early Sony Trinitrons. Uh, some of the first games we've been playing on, you know, these like uh, that's just the '70s style, a lot of wood, not really um, any inputs yet on your TV. You're still using, uh, you know, RF signals. And then we move on to the 80s. Now that's an 80s set down there. It's, a, it's not, again, it's a shark, this little wood grain one. So it's not, uh, but it's the same style as these, where there's still a lot of wood grain, a little bit of the new, uh, you know, plastic on there. And the, 90, the 1990s is really where TVs got into the whole plastic, uh, solid black or solid white, other colors. And that's just a picture of a lot of the Trinitrons that you most likely would have seen. Now, the 1990s is also a time when Sony brought their Trinitron to uh, computers and computer screens and started with those uh, high quality CRT monitors. And then of course the 2000s, the last generation, you have the more square design, still silver, and then even started coming out with widescreen, high def, other versions of the CRT right towards the end of like 2006. It's pretty much when they were abandoned. All right, so I just want to go through a couple of modern uses. A lot of people know a lot of these things. Obviously, arcade cabinets, many of them out there are going to be loaded with CRTs. And um, retro video games are perfect for CRTs. They're all analog videos. Anything that puts out analog video signal is going to be best on a CRT in its native format. VHS, DVD, laser disc, any of those old movie formats are perfect for CRTs. Uh, retro PC, if you do anything where you're looking up a retro old computer. And there's even a move more recently to do modern gaming on higher end CRTs. And I'll show you that at the very end a little bit, but there are some CRTs that are actually really well made enough to be able to still be usable today for even modern high def signals. And you can still stream older 4x3 content onto tubes like this, and uh, they'll always probably be used for test signals out of oscilloscopes. Um, so some of the reasons these are going to be your best options. 
There's no lag or latency added by an um, analog television, and so you're not going to have any troubles with lag, which can be a big problem with uh, retro gaming on any kind of new modern display. You can really have trouble with lag. And uh, they're easier to connect retro gaming consoles to. They look better. You get the real, I feel like CRTs have a big part of the nostalgia of playing old games. It's just like a warm fire almost. You get a little nice feeling, you know, just part of the whole experience. Um, and it can, I put down here that retro gaming on CRT can be cheaper at the beginning. Because once you start getting into it and want to get better console and better CRTs, uh, those start to go up a lot in price. And much easier to use a CRT than a scaler. There are scalers out there that can help you get from uh, your analog signal up to HDMI, but those will either add lag or can be complicated and require firmware and a lot of uh, other things like that. And they definitely have some of the best picture screen controls you'll probably ever see on displays. And Again, CRTs are just designed for analog video, and most consumer CRTs and then pro video monitors, which are pro versions of the CRT, they can handle 240p and 480i video resolutions perfectly. Those are the resolutions that pretty much all your retro games are going to come out of naturally. And that's really those those two formats. You have extreme problems you know, if you try to do that in modern televisions. They're not really designed to hold display those older. Uh, video signals. I talked briefly about some of the higher pro end models that will do a full range from 240p all the way up to 1080i. And uh, then you've got digital, visual, digital video started at 480p, and uh, that is one that can only really be displayed on VGA CRT monitors, 480p and up, uh, unless you've got one of those pro monitors that, that can go through the whole spectrum of sizes. So nearly all flat screen TVs and monitors don't support 240p or 480i. And again, we talked about low quality scalers adding problems. And let's talk about obviously the disadvantages of owning CRTs. They do take up a lot of power. Um, not, it's not a huge amount, but it is significantly more than your, uh, your regular flat screen does anymore. They're of course big and heavy, um, a large footprint, I mean, they take up a lot of space. Uh, if you get a bigger one. And then, it, hindsight for the, to match that, you've got most, most of the time you're not going to find a display over 36 inches on a CRT. Some people do complain about the 480i flicker on a CRT, and that's just where the interlaced picture flickers back and forth. Some people pick that up with their eyes, and then some people really pick up the high frequency noise through ears. Um, now, if you do get older, uh, you can lose that hearing ability, so there are some people that can't hear it at all. And most CRTs cannot display digital video signals, we talk about that. And they're so old now, and been out of circulation for so long in production, that they, a lot of them end up needing repair when you get them. I'd like to tell you a couple things here, if you're going to ever be looking for a CRT, what you would want to do, uh, you know, how, how, what's a good thing to check was to check through? First, obviously, does it work? Does it turn on? And when you get it turned on, how does the screen look? Is it everything look kind of normal? It's really important now to, to focus on the brand if you can, because you don't. If you're going to take the time to get a big CRT, there's some brands you should look for, and maybe some brands you should just avoid. But what inputs does the TV have or come with? Uh, what screen size best fits your situation? So s CRTs do get as small, generally as 5 inches, and up to 36. What year was it manufactured? And all that stuff is good to study beforehand. CRTs, we're going to talk here for a second about consumer grade. Uh, these are just the inputs you'll see Excuse me. on a normal consumer grade CRT, and that's RF, which is the old screw-in uh, signal, which gives you pretty much the worst quality uh, available video. And then you've got composite inputs, or AV, which is your yellow, white, red. Uh, S-Video was a big improvement back in the 1980s-ish, uh, early 90s. 
and that was added to most TVs. And then the last input added on most consumer-grade CRTs in the United States or North American would have been component. And then earlier CRTs actually didn't call it component, they called it color stream. So you'll notice that if you look at an older tube and it says color stream on it, that's just a fancier word for component before they called it component. I've got some pictures here. Now this top one right here, it's a little bit difficult to see, but the third input there is the color stream where it has the green, dark green, the blue, and then the red. Now if you see a CRT, it's a consumer CRT, and you're looking for one, if you see that input, that's probably going to be your best bet because there's not going to be any really fancy extra scaling. And that's really when tubes were high, highest quality and everything, even though you might find a newer one that has uh, more inputs like this one, there's a chance it's not going to have as good a picture as some of the color stream ones. And then let's get into some best brands. Obviously, Sony Trinitron it was the king of Sony, or I mean, of CRTs. The best years to look for are between 1996 and 2005, if you're going to get one. This is a consumer grade, again. And just some tips, stay away from widescreen consumer CRTs and CRTs that are, again, consumers that have HDMI inputs, because those actually have scalers built into them that will add lag, uh, kind of like your, H your HDMI would on an early flat screen or modern flat screen. It, they just don't do very well, and most people are not happy with them. 